What's up guys, how are you doing? So today we're gonna talk about the, uh, the Tesla, uh, <laughs> not the Tesla, the SpaceX uh, situation. Uh, uh, there, was a, uh, there was like a successful uh, chapsticks, chapstick, they call it the chapsticks booster catch. So we're gonna have the full breakdown. So so the, the groundbreaking success story from SpaceX, uh, it was the first ever mid-air catch of the super heavy booster using the incredible chapsticks arms right so basically that's what happened um like um okay hold on so basically uh, they're using a reusable rocket to um to be able to bring the spacex to, to be able to bring the booster back on earth and it was successful guys so it's a pretty big news if you're a space enthusiast you see it you see what happened here so as it falling down and then now the booster rocket's gonna fire up so it fires up so that it can slow down the speed so that the speed can decrease because as you go down to where you're landing you got to slow down the speed and now it's about to slow down so that now you can focus on going to the to the to the arms in the you see here now the arms is catching it and the arm closes Bum! It's locked up now. Beautifully locked up, and, and it's very precise. So, so guys, think about this. This is something that from from <laughs> fall from space, very high on space, and they were able to do that. That's that's quite incredible. I don't know how you feel about this. It's quite incredible to see something like this. Like, um, uh, yeah. So basically, um, like, uh, so basically, let's talk about it. Uh, so, uh. So understanding the Starship program, before we dive into the detail of the recent booster cache, let's take a moment to talk about the Starship program. So basically, SpaceX Starship is a fully reusable spacecraft system designed for human space travel to the moon, Mars, and even beyond. Starship is composed of two stages, the massive super heavy booster, which provides the initial thrust to get into space, and the Starship upper stage, which carries passengers and cargo to its destinations. This system is designed to be fully reusable, which is what makes the recent fifth test flight so important. So it's it's a fully reusable test, right? It makes it like um, so. Basically, that's that's what it does. Um, um, so basically, like uh, as you can see now, it's going down, and uh, it, it's like uh, it, it's it's like it's going to separate from the starship. And then after that, you see the booster separate is going to be able to go down and pinpoint where exactly it's going to land in like a freaking like, <laughs> like, a, I don't know, I don't know, a very small radius. That's quite amazing, like what Elon Musk has done. So the importance of reusability. Now let's talk about why reusability is such a big deal. Traditional racket or single use. They launch, complete their mission, and then fall into the ocean or burn up during re-entry. This makes space mission extremely expensive. SpaceX changed the game with the Falcon 9 rocket, which pioneered reusing rocket booster by landing back, back on Earth. Play footage of a Falcon 9 booster landing on, landing on the drone ship. Okay, so so uh, so so I'm gonna show you like how a Falcon 9 booster land on the drone ship, right? I'm gonna show you that. Guys, I, I'm gonna show you like th this was a previous test, right? The Falcon 9. This is the Falcon and landing on a drone ship. We, uh, we thought this was previously. This this was this was a successful one. This was a, quite an amazing feat, man. Like I don't know how he does this, but like you know, something come from so far from the sky is able to pinpoint exactly where it's gonna land. That's that was quite a, that's quite amazing. But it's quite scary too. I right? don't don't you think if you were like uh, inside this this a spaceship uh, coming from the sky that you you gotta land. If you don't land on the ship, you land on water. I mean, I, I know I know he knows what he's doing, but still, man, it's kind of like God damn it. Some people they like the scary stuff, but like, uh, now let's talk about why reusability is such a big deal. Traditional rocket or single use, they launch, complete their mission, and then fall into the ocean or burn up during reentry. This makes space mission extremely expensive. SpaceX changed the game with their Falcon 9 rocket, which pioneered reusing rocket booster by landing them back on Earth. The Starship is taking that concept to the next level. Not only does SpaceX aim to reuse the Starship upper stage, but also the super heavy booster. And this brings us to the groundbreaking event we are discussing today. The first ever mid-air booster cache using Mechazilla. 
Now I'm going to uh, give you a quick summary of the past flight. So on a SN8 test flight December 2020, uh, like uh, there was a flight that happened on in December 2020. It was a very uh, highly anticipated launches at the time. The flight successfully demonstrated Starship ascent, engine shut down, and the re-entry flip maneuver. However, during the landing phase, the prototype crashed due to a methane tank pressure issue, causing it to land to uh, at too high of a speed. So this is the SN8 test flight. Yeah, there was a crash that happened there. Um, so guys, the SN booster booster uh, crashed. I, I don't have a footage of it, but it, it exploded. So this was uh, something that happened in December 2020. And in, and in 2021, uh, uh, Elon Musk was, was doing the SN9 on February 2021, which faced similar challenge with a fair landing due, due to a misfiring engine. Then came SN10 in March 2021, which actually managed to land. But just minutes after landing, it exploded on the pad due to a fuel tank issue. That was the SN10 in March 2021. I'm, I might be able to show you that one. Hold on a second. Guys, here's the SN10, right? Trying to land, right? And you're going to see what happened. It's going to land successfully, but it's for some wild reason, it's going to explode. It happened in March 2021. Boom, it lands, right? And it's going to stay there. And now, so now everybody thinks it's excited. They think they made it. Wow, look at this. This is awesome. But watch this. After a couple of minutes, for some reason it's gonna explode yeah it exploded like this so i don't understand this was something that happened so basically they say that um uh, if it, it fell due to a misfiring engine then came sn10 okay it, 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 so the sn10 actually actually managed to land but just minutes after landing it exploded on the on the path due to a fuel tank issue uh so it was a fuel tank issue probably the fuel got caught up with fire i don't know Despite this, the SN10 proved the SOS ship could execute a successful landing, even if only temporarily. The SOS ship was able to land. That's the SN10, okay? Was a, each of these failures proved the way for the success of Lady Flight. As the SpaceX team kept refining the, the design, learning more with each test. Finally, we saw a major breakthrough with SN15 in May 2021. This was the first successfully high altitude test flight. Of Starship SN15 took off, ascended perform, and perf uh, it performed the belly flap maneuver and landed successfully with no explosion afterward. Okay, so in, in, in March, in May 2021, the, the Starship landed. This marked a significant milestone in space development of reusable spacecraft. So, so basically, um, so basically, I, I, I want to make sure you guys understand something. So the SN15 Starship, um, basically, um, was only focusing on the Starship, not the booster. Remember that uh, for the Starship to, to, to take off, right, you need the booster also. So we did, we, they did not test the booster yet. So now in uh, the SN50 Starship uh, landed correctly. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna show you that 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 clip, okay? This is the SN50 Starship, right? And this is where it's gonna land correctly. Like you, you're gonna see what happened here. It's gonna go so so down, and it's gonna be able to land. This is the SN15 uh, Starship. Watch this. Bam! It opens up, and then then it lands carefully, nicely, beautifully. So the Starship is what is gonna carry the passenger and the cargo. This is where we're gonna put the stuff, the assets that we wanna carry. This is actually why we are building this thing. We are building this thing for. The, for the starship not for the <laughs> not for the rocket the rocket is just the power that pushes us so so but now lately just last weekend we, we talk about the booster okay so now here's the booster situation right this is the, the booster so the booster um uh like was able to land uh successfully uh we're going to talk about the booster Right, the, so the, the starship takes off. The booster is, is pushing the starship, and the booster, I guess, is gonna like I don't know, like, like, uh, basically, kind of separate. So guys, okay, so I want to make sure you guys understand because there's there's many uh, things going on here. During the last test, right? Um, the the uh, during the last test, the the the, the there was like basically uh, um, there was like a the, the the booster and the starship the the starship uh, l uh, went to to orbit the earth at high velocity and returned back 
but the starship that carries that's supposed to carry people and and tanks did not have anybody in it you know and uh basically they were able to like um uh, like uh, leave it uh down uh to the uh, down into the indian ocean uh, and then uh, uh so basically the starship was left down they were focusing on the booster the booster was able to come back exactly at the place where they they were looking for it to land the starship was just like a demo starship they put it on it they understood that it, it was going to be lost they were just testing so right now they were testing the they were focusing solely on the booster but they had a starship kind of like a frame on top of it okay so the starship was there it went to do the velocity on the orbit of the earth but the starship uh, did not have anybody in it no human beings it, and it came back on earth but it, it landed on the o indian ocean it got lost there it's okay it's just a test you know so basically um that's what happened um so the uh, the starship upper ship from the fifth test has not returned to earth in the same way as the super heavy booster so uh, basically after separating from the booster the starship upper ship reached orbital velocity and performed a control re-entry it did not land back on Earth, but instead made a control splashdown in the Indian Ocean. So it was part of the plan test to demonstrate the starship ability to re-enter the atmosphere safely and basically survive the extreme heat and stress of re-entry. There's an extreme heat when you go back to the Earth because uh, the velocity of the starship is unbelievable. I, I heard that this thing goes like, I don't know, 20,000 miles per hour. Can you imagine, guys, guys, that? And you're trying to go back. The friction of the Earth... And that metal on the starship is going to be very hot. And they want to make sure that it can do that. It can go back to the Earth atmosphere. So it's an, a crazy, it's a crazy um, uh, fit, right? So that's basically uh, what happened with this thing. So, um, so, like, uh, so now, um, let's go to the booster. So what exactly happened with the booster? Um, so, so, so they, they have something called the Mechazilla. So basically, these are giant mechanical arm mounted on the launch tower at SpaceX Starbase in Texas. So basically, um, this the um, the booster is gonna like it's gonna go back, right? This is uh, basically the booster. It's gonna go back uh, on back on Earth to the to the um, base locations, uh, SpaceX base in Texas, uh, okay? So, and that's exactly what it did, right? It went back uh, and it was able to land over there in Texas. So, um, it, it, you, you can look at it like nice and slowly as it goes down. So, it, you, you can see it here, like, you know, so the booster um, is, is re-entering the Earth atmosphere, right? You see it, right? You see how this thing goes fast? I'm going to read this for you. 19,000 kilometers, 16,000, 14,000, uh, 1,400 kilometers, 1,200 kilometers, 1,000, bomb, 900, 500, 200, 100 kilometers, uh, 50 kilometers, 40 kilometers, 10, 20, bomb. You see? Now it, it did it. Okay, I'm going to play it at a normal speed uh, because uh, I, I had it on fast. I'm going to play it at a normal speed. But even at normal speed, you can see all this thing entering the atmosphere is super fast. You see, like, okay, so at, at this, it's, it's like a 4,200 km, km per hour. Okay, I, I know some people like to know kilometer per mile. Okay, let me see. Um, let me see. Hold on a second. Just one second, guys. Okay. So, 4,000 km per hour, we're talking about, like, um, oh, uh, close to, like, um, like, five, like, like 2,500 miles per hour. Okay, so this thing is going back to the atmosphere, as you can see, and it's, it's, it's 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 you 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 can start to see the earth atmosphere it's going down right so 42 4100 kilometer 4000 kilometer 3900 kilometer 37 36 35 34 33 32 31 2900 27 24 22 21 2000 kilometer per hour uh, okay, this thing is going down. 1900, 1800, 1700, 1600, 1500 kilometers per hour. This thing gotta go. Okay, 1300, 1200, 1000 kilometers per hour. Okay, like okay, we're going to 1100, 1200. Earth atmosphere, gravity is hitting. Now we need the power. Let's go. Power, power. Like slow this thing down. 230, 215. You see how it's slowing down? That's going slower. 108 kilometers per hour. 140 kilometers per hour. 100. Okay, 90 kilometers per hour. 70, 60 kilometer, 20 kilometer, 2 kilometer, 1 kilometer, 0. 
now it's at zero kilometer per hour and now it's like it's it's on and that's why he's able to land and that's why we got it here you see what i'm saying it's a quite an amazing fit what what they are doing with this thing and um so basically so uh so this uh, so as you have seen the mechazile are giant mechanical arm mounted on the launch tower at spacex starbase this idea is that after the booster launches the starship into space right the so booster job is to launch it into space and that's it do the job and go back to earth it doesn't land like falcon 9 boosters with landing legs so this booster does not need leg instead it's caught media by this arm eliminating eliminating the need for landing gear and allowing for quicker reuse um so basically they feel like without the landing is it's easier to 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 to, to get it back on track on October 13, 2024, SpaceX nailed this inc incredible complex maneuver for the first time during the fifth test flight of the Starship. The booster separated from the Starship, wow, upper stage, re-entered uh, uh, Earth atmosphere and was perfectly caught by Mechazilla arm. This is a monumental step toward making the entire rocket fully reusable, cutting costs and making space travel more efficient. That's amazing. Why the media catch matters? But why is this media cache such a big deal? It's all about turnaround time and cost efficiency. Traditional racket recovery method like using landing legs or splash down require refurbishment and preparation between flights. By catching the booster mid-air, SpaceX can significantly reduce the time and resources needed to get the booster ready for the next launch. Wow. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what they're trying to do, guys. They're trying to get it ready for the next launch. Okay, guys. Okay. Why is it better to do it like that? Why is it better to use uh, uh, like a catching arm instead of like just um, uh, you, uh, you could use a catching arms or you could use like a, uh, 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 like a, a booster with its own legs. They decided not to do the legs. They decided to do the catch so that this thing catches the rocket falling down the skies studying for like a for like a 2000 miles per hour and then slowing down to like 100 miles per hour to, to, to 20 and then catch it uh, with total precision uh so uh, so basically the the main reason is weight saving one of the main reason so basically those legs they add a lot of weight one of the biggest reasons is the weight saving landing leads add extra weight to the rocket so in space travel every kilogram count right so by removing the landing legs and catching the booster mid-air SpaceX saves a significant amount of weight, right? And it, it can instead be used for more payload capacity or fuel. Uh, the goal is to make Starship and the Super Heavy Booster as efficient as possible. And reducing unnecessary weight is a key part of that, right? So what is the other thing? Faster turnaround for reusability. Another advantage is the faster turnaround time. So basically when the booster lands on legs, it still needs to be retrieved from the landing pad or drone ship transport it back to the launch site and prepare for the next flight. This process takes time, right? When we are making Zilla, the booster is caught directly at the launch site, so there's no need for transportation or complex recovery operation. Show animation of how the booster is caught. Okay, so basically, um, so you know how the booster is caught already. So uh, uh, this significant cuts down uh, and the time between flight, which align with SpaceX long-term goal of making space travel as routine as airline travel. The quicker they can turn around a rocket for use, the more launches they can perform in a given time frame. Landing legs introduce potential points of failure. Reducing risk is an error. Okay, so the landing uh, uh, potential failure. If one leg if one leg fail, wow, that is a very interesting point. If one leg fail to deploy or if there's a surface issue, it could result in a crash or tipping of the booster by catching the by catching the booster with mechanical arms, SpaceX reduces this risk. The booster is caught securely mid-air, avoiding issue with uneven landing surface or malfunctioning landing legs. Show footage of life Falcon landing attempt that have tipped over or fell due to leg malfunction. Okay, so I'm going to show you a footage of uh, uh, the Falcon 9 tipping over because of leg malfunction. So here I'm going to show you how the Falcon 9 land and four uh right it's going to tip over so you can understand like like what can happen when you do it like that so that's why it's very good for the the arm to catch it mid-air one of the reasons like you know what i'm saying so i can show you that 
You see, so it's gonna it's gonna land and it's gonna fall. You see what I'm saying? Now everybody, everything explodes. It, 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 it's something weird with these things. It's like you know, you gotta like you got you gotta make sure that it it doesn't do that. So um. So uh yeah so and and basically what that what that does it enhances efficiency for future missions. So looking toward the future SpaceX vision for multi-planetary mission require extreme efficiency. Uh, the ultimate goal for Starship is to make deep space exploration, right, and collision of Mars a reality. Uh, to do that, uh, every step of the launch and recovery process must be optimized. Uh, so the chapsticks arm makes uh, helps make that possible. You see what I'm saying? So it it it, it enhances the future of, of future mission by saving weight, improving turnaround time, and increasing reliability. Catching the booster with arms help ensure the long term sustainability of space exploration. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's good about this. And I and what I like about having the arm there. The arm is on Earth, right? So all the time, I hope that we can have like the arm. You can test it right before the 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 booster comes in, right? Or the space it, it comes in, so you can uh, you can test it and see if, if it's good. If it's not good, then you you can fix it before the booster gets back or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That, that's why. Or maybe you could have an alternate booster at a close location. Well, 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 an, an alternate um, uh, uh, catching arm, Mikazilla, another another Mikazilla arm. Where you can catch the booster if the this this arm doesn't work, so it creates better alternative. Like when you have multiple arms in one location, it's not good to just have one arm. And also, also like um, exactly. So um, so what's next for Mikasa and SpaceX? Uh, so with the successful demonstration of the super heavy booster catch, right? With the with the successful demonstration of the super heavy booster catch. SpaceX is one step closer to making Starship fully operational, fully operational, right? Uh, the next stage will involve more tests, both for catching the booster and the Starship upper stage, and they refine the re-entry and landing system for the entire vehicle. Uh, okay, the upcoming mission, like NASA Artemis program, where SpaceX Starship will, will play a key role in returning astronauts to the moon. SpaceX is also moving forward with their, uh, with their Mars mission goals. And the booster cache is a vital part of the making those missions more affordable and sustainable. The successful test flight shows how far we have come, but it's also just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the beginning of this whole situation. And um, I think, um, uh, like, um, I, I'm very optimistic about Elon Musk making this thing happen. And I think he can, he can succeed in this if he, if he does it correctly. I really believe in that.